Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to learn about a force called friction. Now, a thing that you need to know about friction is, is that it always goes against movement. Okay, So there's a diagram to uh, my left, so in the meantime, please copy this diagram down as I explain what's going on in this scenario here. Okay. Uh, here we have a object, okay, it might be a watermelon, a chair, a ball, whatever, and it's being pushed to the right. Now, according to the definition of friction, okay, because it always goes against movement, we have the force of friction going to the left. Remember, it's always opposite of movement. Now, with that out of the way, let's take a look into this terminology. We have an object that is not moving. From here on out, we are going to call such objects static objects. Static meaning that it is not moving. And if it's not accelerating, that means that your F net is equal to zero. Okay, both in the X and the Y direction. So before we get ahead, um, let me give you the equation for the force of friction. The force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction, which is represented by the, this Greek letter mu, times the normal force, okay, or the contact force. And remember, this is a force that is always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so if you want to see here what I mean, um, perpendicular in this case means that if this is a surface right along this edge. Okay, if that is the surface, it, it, it makes a 90 degree angle. So from here on up, and it goes straight up. 90 degrees, straight up. Right? If this floor is 0 degrees, okay, this would be 90. All right? So let's get this out of the way. We have a normal force here. And if we were to write a F net equation, we would write it like this. The F net, or the sum of all the forces in the Y direction, is equal to the normal force, which I'm going to write as F of N, minus the weight, okay, the weight down here, which I'm going to write as F of G. Now, it's minus because it's going down. Now, in order to find either one of these, we have this crucial piece of information here that says the F net is zero. So that means the F net in the Y direction is zero. And we can make that equal to the normal force minus the weight, or F of G. Okay, And we can add F of G to both sides to get f of g is equal to f of n. Okay, Now this only applies when the surface is not, okay, keyword not angled, so a flat surface. All right, now let's take a look at f of x net. If we take a look at f of x net, we can see that there's a force to the right being pushed. I'm going to write that as f of a, or force applied, minus force of friction. Now it's minus because it's going to the left. Okay, And we know that f x net is equal to 0, is equal to the force applied minus the force of friction. Now at this point, we can actually write in force applied um, minus mu s for static f of n. Okay, So what I did was I just took this equation right here and I plugged it in right there. Okay. Now this is only this is only if this is only if the f of x net is 0.
Okay. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to show you a graph that describes friction. Okay. So ignore the picture to the left. Um, copy this graph down. We have a x-axis and a y-axis. And this x-axis is going to be the force applied. Okay, the force applied, or F of A. And in the y-axis is going to be the force of friction. Okay, now I want you to imagine a refrigerator with me. If you were to push a refrigerator, or if you want to move a refrigerator, at first you would apply zero force, but then you would apply force slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay. And it's still not moving, still not moving, still not moving until, boom, it budges. And once it budges, can you believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, it becomes a lot easier to move. Now, we learned that static means not moving. Okay, Static means not moving, and it is in this part of the graph. Okay, The first part of the graph where it's not moving is the static part. And you'll notice that the max static force, which is right there, is greater than the, kinet the kinetic part, which is in this section. Okay. This is all the kinetic um, friction area. And in this area, we have the equation, the force of friction for the kinetic or force of friction for any moving object is coefficient of friction, mu. I'm going to write a k there for kinetic times the normal force. Okay? And this point right here, I'll write that in blue. That point right there is your F of S or F of F of S, sounds funny, static force max. Okay. And that is equal to mu S or coefficient of friction static times F of N. Okay. And all along this line, okay, all along that static line, we have I'll write this in light blue. Force of friction static is equal to force applied. Okay, and that's because if you remember our scenario, um, the refrigerator wasn't budging. That means that the force of friction was pushing back hard enough to go against your force applied. Okay, so your F net is zero because nothing was moving. That's why your force of friction, S, is equal to F of A. I'll rewrite that down here. Force of friction, static, is equal to force applied, and this is when it's not moving. Okay. Um, at that point, it gets to a F of S max, and that is uh, when it begins to move. Okay, that is when it begins to move. All right, and so I'll write that in that note here. Begins to move. And here we have the kinetic friction, and this is when it is moving. Okay, a lot of different stuff going on. All right, so with that, let's take a look at this diagram here. In this diagram, we can see that force of friction is it's uh, less than the force of the push. Okay, meaning that the force applied is so much greater than the force of friction, meaning that the object is actually moving. Okay, so a couple of main points here. For a moving object,
for your moving object, your force applied is greater than the force of friction. All right. Okay, and also um, a note, your force of friction kinetic is less than your force of friction static. What this means is that it's harder to move a still moving object compared to a move that is already an object that is already moving. Okay? All right, let's move on. All right. Uh, in this last example here, we can see that there is a object moving to the right. All right. Now remember, if it's moving, it is kinetic. And it is accelerating to the left. All right. If it moves to the right, but it's accelerating to the left, that means it's slowing down. Okay. It is slowing down. And eventually, it'll get to... Um, rest. Okay. Now if we were to write these equations, it would look like this. F net okay, F net in the y direction is equal to the normal force minus the weight. Okay, and we know that F net is equal to zero it is equal to F of G. All right, and it's zero because it's not moving up or down. Now, if we were to look at the F net in the X direction, that changes a couple of things. The only force that is there in our free body diagram is our force of friction. Okay, and so that will become our, our equation. And from there, we can find out different things. For example, we can change this into mu k f of n and we can find what mu k is if we know f of n and vice versa okay all right so these are all the notes for friction